Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Welcome back to TalkingSports.tv. I'm Marty York, and I'll tell you, I'm excited. This is really an enjoyable evening. We've talked to some wonderful people tonight. We had some serious discussions about concussions with some intelligent men. We, then we talked to Howard Kamen a little bit, and we talked to Lawrence Morgenstern a little bit, and we talked to Michael Feinwax, and we've had a good time tonight. We're about to introduce you to a tremendous guest, a gentleman who has won an Olympic gold medal, and he's got a very heartwarming story. We'll tell you about it in a second. But I want to tell you right now, this wing that I'm eating here at Right Wing in Toronto is just unbelievable. It really is good, isn't it, Nikki? They're damn good wings. i got to say, this is the right wing doing it the right way. I haven't had wings this good in a long, long time. And you know what? I even decided to get myself a beer, too, because now that Hanson Howard's gone, I can drink safely. Yeah. <laughs> And I can't talk unless I had a sip, but, but Handsome Howard, yeah, he's still here, he's watching, and I don't know what he's doing, but he seemed to be with some ladies. Well, he, he was, you know, he's trying handsome. to convince them that he was Handsome Howard, and I still maintain he's half right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get, to ser some, let's get into some serious discussion right now. I want to talk to you about Paul Rosen, who joins us now. Paul, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Paul. Paul Rosen has been in uh, five world championships as a goaltender for Canada. He has been in three Olympics as a goaltender for Canada. He has a gold medal from Torino in 2006. I've known Paul for many, many years, and I find him absolutely fascinating. When Paul was a kid, he was an outstanding hockey player. He suffered injury after injury after injury in hockey. And then he became an umpire. And he actually umpired in one of my leagues. Did he? And yeah. actually, I think a couple of my leagues. Absolutely. And he's a, he's a first-rate ranked umpire in Canada. And one day he walks to the park, and he's totally nonchalant. And Paul is missing a leg. And Paul says, oh, hi, guys, to all the players waiting at the park. And he says, oh, geez. What do you, oh, I guess I must have forgot my leg in the car. And it was very funny. It was a very, uh, it was a tremendous way of uh, breaking the ice. We had not seen that. And Paul played for the Special Olympic team in Canada. Para Paralympics. Paralympic team. Yeah. And he was a uh, gold medal winner. But I want to ask you, first of all, tell us about the background. What happened? How did the leg get lost, first of all? And then what made you become a nationally ranked, an internationally ranked athlete? To me, it's all about your attitude. The, the number one thing is your attitude. I, I speak to a lot of kids who are sick, and you know, the sickness is one thing, but if you can get over it with your mindset, that's what it's all about. In 1975, I was playing hockey for the Thornhill Thunderbirds, AAA midget team. Coming around the net, caught my right skate in a rut in the ice, broke my leg, similar to a Joe Theismann injury, broken in 14 places, tore three of the four ligaments in my knee, and that's, that was it. Everybody said I'd never play again, and, I knew I was going to do something special with my life, but I had no clue what. And in 1997, years passed, I was helping the Israeli national team. We were in a tournament coming back from Yugoslavia, Belgrade, Yugoslavia at the time. I was in an airport, got up from a chair, my leg broke. They had to do a knee replacement. There was nothing left in my knee at the age of 37. They did the knee replacement, picked up an infection. And a lot of people don't realize, but the hospital sometimes is one of the places where you pick up the most yeah. infections. So you go to the hospital to be helped. Unfortunately for me, at, at that time, the infection set in. Over the next two and a half years, a lot of problems. And finally, in June of 1999, I was given three months to live. The infection was starting to eat away at my body. It was going into my bloodstream. And I remember saying to the doctor, when the doctor told me I was gonna die, there's, there's no way, I'm, I'm not interested in dying yet. I got three kids, I, I have to live. He offered amputation. I decided to have the leg amputated. They amputated the next day, and it's been 13 years. And I'm telling you, Marty, you've known me for years. The last 13 years of my life, I've had a lot of things happen to me in my personal life, but never has my leg been anything to, to affect me into doing anything I wanted to do in my life. Good they amputated you. my leg, and six months later, at the age of 40, I made the national team, the Canadian national team. Played 11 years, the greatest game in the world, hockey, for the greatest country in the world, Canada. 
three Olympic Games, a gold medal, played with some of the greatest athletes in the world, and I'm just a guy who refuses to give up. As far as I'm concerned, you are one of the greatest athletes in the world. If you can overcome something like that and come back just as strong as before, if not stronger, congratulations. Thank you, and I think anybody can. I really, I, I do not think I'm anything special. I truly believe that I'm just a guy who refuses to give up, and if you want to tell me that I can't do something, that's the sure way to get me to do it. Mm, right. There's so many, special, there's so many kids out there that all they need is hope. That's all they need. They're missing a leg, they're paralyzed. Things happen to everybody every day. Just give them hope and anything's possible. Paul, that's your gold medal from Torino, 2006. Yep. Why don't you just flash that in front of the camera? That's the gold. Uh, a lot of uh, stories in this gold medal. It was uh, 2007. I was at an autograph session at Downshoe Park with a late Bob Probert. Had my medal down on the uh, table with Cheryl Pounder from the women's team. She had three of her medals down. Some kid decided to pick the medal up and he didn't want to work for it. Stole it. Don Cherry that night on Coach's Corner told the rat to give it back. A week later, we got it back. Don Cherry, for those of you who don't know, is a Canadian <laughs> hockey icon. Yes, he is. But we're in Canada. I'm sorry, everybody's got All these know people Don in Cherry Kentucky is. and in Texas. I know you don't know who Don Cherry is, but he is a legend here in Canada. We talked about him earlier with the concussion experts. Yeah. He does advocate violence, but he also can be a good man at times. I've known him very well. I, I've, I've known him for years, and he has a good heart. And he it certainly did help you get your medal back. There's no question about that. Absolutely. When he went on television in the field to people to bring back. And he did, and they brought it back. Exactly the way yeah. he said. He said, put it in the mail, we'll get it back, and we won't have the police involved. A week later, it ended up in the mailbox, and... Uh, there you go. There's also a movie about Paul Rosen, uh, which was uh, a hell of a story. It talks about called it. Sledhead. They they followed our team around for a year in 2008, leading up to the World Championship, which is that what this ring is from, from winning the Worlds in 2008. It was a great experience, and we we couldn't have. The producer was so happy, we couldn't have scripted it any better. We won the game. We scored with 9.3 seconds left to win it all. Wow, so it was pretty amazing. cool. Yeah. Well, Paul, what else do you have going on these days? What, you, you're working with StopConcussions.com people, I, aren't I you? I work with Stop Concussions. I had a number of concussions playing the game of sled hockey. It's a vicious game. I also work with ABC Life Literacy, trying to teach adults that there's no shame in the fact that you need help um, in reading or writing or literacy. Uh, Jock Demers got me involved in that with, with his problems. Mm -hmm. And I'm also uh, in the midst of uh, hopefully uh, putting together uh, my life story in, in print. Oh, I'm sure it'll be a great one. I'd love to read it when it comes out. Thank you. And the fact of the matter is, and I know this firsthand, Paul Rosen is an outstanding motivational speaker, which is another thing you do these days. And, Absolutely. Uh, maybe you just want to pass on word about how sure. to get in touch with you yeah. and uh, have you come and speak at your ba at banquets. I've uh, had the pleasure of attending banquets that you've spoken at, and I'm not just stroking Paul when I say this. There you go. Because I've known him a long time, and we've had arguments oh. nose to nose on the diamond, right? I've tossed Marty out of more baseball games than I can remember, <laughs> and he has been more than happy to tell me where to go. <laughs> right. So having said that, I will also, and that's true. That is very true. Absolutely. You remember when you kicked me out in uh, nine? It must have been early '90s, maybe late for, '80s, for making, for a, making a mockery of the game. Man. You said he stopped. He was going from first to second, and he stopped because they wanted to get their at-bats. I knew exactly what he was doing, and I'm yelling at him, Marty, don't do it, don't do it. He did it. I threw him out for making a travesty of the game, and we, uh, it was a travesty what happened in the parking lot after. Yeah, because I still say to this day, that was a tremendous strategical move by the manager of that team, which was me. But anyway, Paul, you're a great motivational speaker, seriously. Paul, thank you so much for sharing your story. Just give us your email address if people want to have you come and speak at their banquets. How do they do that? It's info at paulrosen.ca. You can uh, drop me a line. I do a ton of events for kids, for adults, corporate. It's really about getting the message across that anything is possible, that you can achieve greatness if you reach for the stars. Paul, thanks very much for coming by tonight. Thank you. It's, Thank you so it's much, really Paul. terrific it's to cap this marathon with Paul Rosen, who is just a tremendous speaker and a tremendous guy. Thanks and I thank you very much for coming Appreciate again, Paul. And we'll be right back to wrap things up here at TalkingSports.TV. Way right after this! Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to run!